Hi friends and welcome back to the control engineering gig Through this video we're gonna learn how to model any given mechanical system Through an example I will illustrate some steps that are very simple and very active to model any mechanical system and then check whether the the drive equations are correct or not and then use these equations to drive the transfer function between any given input output pair of signals let's start it we have this dynamic system where we have two blocks m and 2m the um, the system is f of t which affects the block m as you can see here the block m also affected by a spring and a damper block 2m has three or four effect uh, affected forces which is given by three springs and a damper okay let's illustrate the steps first step the, the very first thing we want to do is to uh, add appropriate coordinate to the system you can assume any coordinate for the system let us assume that the both blocks are moving to the right with the displacement of x1 this is for 2m and x2 for block m see so block m is moving to the right by displacement equal to x2 while block 2m is also moving to the right but with a displacement of x1 the next step would be uh, defining the kinematic relations between these two displacements or these two coordinates the degree of freedom and eventually we need to find or define the states as well so as you can see there is no direct relation between x1 x2 or between the two coordinates here so uh, we cannot define any kinematic relationship between these two coordinates or these two displacement therefore this system is a two degree of freedom system this means that we need to have two governing equations eventually to fully describe this system so the rule or the idea is that each degree of freedom in your system has to have an equation to describe that part of the system so if you have n degree of freedom so eventually you are expecting to have n equations uh, of motion to fully describe your system so the key here is after you defining the degree of freedom and the kinematic relationship between these degree of freedoms which cancels out some of them as we can see in other examples later the final number uh, of this degree of freedom uh, will give you the final uh, number of equations that you require to describe the system okay since we are def defined the degree of freedoms uh, x1 and x2 we can now define the states which is just the derivative of the given coordinates so we have x1 the velocity of x1 the acceleration of x1 which is the velocity displacement acceleration of 2m we have the same for m uh, as well so we have displacement velocity and acceleration okay after we define the degree of freedom the states the number of governing equation now we have to assume some assumption about the system which is the relation or the uh, the displacement uh, how they affect the system or how we can assume so we can solve the problem so simply we can say that let x to the displacement of the m is greater than the displacement of 2m there's another point i want to emphasize here you can uh, define the coordinates in the direction of the applied force uh, or the uh, applied signal so here is convenient to 
assume that x1 and x2 uh, particularly x2 is moving to the left although all the assumptions uh, have uh, to give the same answer eventually when you are dealing with the dynamic and following up the rules that I, uh, I will illustrate in the following slides okay according to this assumption here we can now define the movement or the dynamic of each uh, element in the system so uh, if x2 is greater than x1 then we expect that for example this spring to be in a tension the the damper be in tension as well the spring has to be in a compression this will be in tension this uh, damper would be in compression as well these are the the actions under the assumption x2 and is x greater than x1 okay okay since we defined the degree of freedoms the states the kinematic relationships we defined the uh, a part of the motion okay and we define the corresponding forces that the internal force that affect each element here so now we are ready to define the governing equations so we use here the first principles which is will be the second law of uh, newton the second law of newton needs uh, or requires to draw the block diagram of each uh, block in the system okay uh, there is another point I have to uh, emphasize here is that these items here or these uh, components here the springs and the dampers are assumed to have no masses so they have they don't have dynamic they affect the the block the blocks that have masses but each one of them they don't have mass so you can apply you cannot apply the uh, the newton second law on them you can apply second law uh, of newton only on the bodies that have masses so let's start with the 2m block 2m we draw block diagram for 2m okay according to the assumption x2 greater than x1 we draw this forces here so we take the reaction of these forces on the blocks so for example we have the reaction that coming from this damper is, comp is uh, tension so it affects the block in the as a, a reaction so it will be in in the opposite direction uh, completely this is true for the other forces here as you can see it here the spring 2a 2k is affected by x2 and x1 since we assumed x2 is greater than x1 so it forces has to be positive so it will be 2k uh, multiplied by the difference between the displacements so we are ready now to uh, write down the Newton's second law okay so another point here is that uh, this force here the sigma of forces the, the summation of forces this force has uh, these force have to be uh, taken algebraically according to the coordinates that you defined in the system so all forces that are pointing to the right are positive the other point the other forces are negative so the only force we have positive is this force here whether the, the, the other three forces are negative okay m here is 2m where is the displacement x is x1 so this is the equation you can arrange the equation to write it in this way so here is the very important point to know to check if your equation is correct okay uh, I mean it's correct in terms of the sig the, the signs here so here is uh, 
a night hair. If all the terms on the left right on the left hand of this equation are positive, uh, in other words, if the degree of freedom x1, uh, that all terms of x1, which are the uh, <coughs> displacements, velocities, and accelerations, all have positive signals on the left side of the system. If this is true, yes, then this is your equation. This is the first equation. This equation is true. Uh, it uh, It is one of the equations that you require to describe the system and yes the degree of freedom x1 has the right equation with the right signs in it okay let's jump to the next block which is block m you need to draw the uh, free body diagram of that block as well okay remember you are drawing the reactions not the, the these the actions do you drawing the reactions on the block so uh, it has to be in the opposite side okay once more you need to apply newton's second law uh, sigma forces has to be have to be in the direction of the assumed coordinate so each each force in the two that's pointing to the right has to be positive we, which we don't have any of them so all forces will have a signal or sign of or negative m is just the mass of the block whereas the displacement x is x2 here so you re rearrange this system so uh, now check the uh, terms of the degree of freedom x2 which we have acceleration displacement and velocity all have positive signals or positive signs okay this is x has a positive sign but it is on the right hand side if you take it to the left right side side it will have a negative so this a negative sign so this equation is true and is uh, uh, the second equation that we can add it to the first one to fully describe our system so all terms are positive yes so this equation is true okay now now we had we have two equations and we have two degree of freedom so these equations are fully describing the the system the given system we can use these equations in the perspective of mechanical engineering to find the transfer function for example so so far we have these equations is easy through these steps so, uh, of course we're assuming zero initial conditions but before jumping to the next step uh, let me uh, say that this system has one input and two outputs the outputs may be uh, the x2 of 2m of this block so you can have two functions here between the input put x2 between the input and output x1 okay see how we can drive these transfer functions or find these transfer functions take the Laplace transform of the first equation here and take it for the second equation as well you can rearrange these equations to give you the final form here so once you have this equation it is very forward to find the transfer function between any pairs of input output so we're gonna use these equations equation and two in our uh, steps to find the transfer functions so let me remember you uh, remind you sorry uh, of the coordinates we have coordinate x1 and coordinate x2 which are they are the outputs so if you want to find the output between the, uh, the the transfer function between the first output which is x1 and the applied force or the uh, active force or the acting force so it, it is easy from one we can uh, find x2 in term of x1 okay 
and then introduce this equation into the second equation here or this relation this new relation in the second equation here okay and now we can uh, the all equation the both sides of the equation are in term of the output x1 and the input f of s so it's matter of just uh, rearranging the equations okay you can take this part to the uh, left side and it factor out by x1 of s and then simply find the ratio between x1 and f of s which will be this transfer function okay let's find the transfer function between uh, between f of s and x2 okay one can perform the same steps uh, from one we can write uh, x2 in terms of x1 or yes x1 in terms of x2 sorry then introduce this into equation 2 and solve for x1 so now we have the equations in term of x2 and the function f of s just rearrange the system and find the ratio uh, between the output x2 and f of s which is the input okay the gig is still confusing but now he is impressed these these steps these steps the four or the three steps uh, are, can simpli simplify uh, the way to finding the transfer function which is uh, before that we can find the governing equations the finding the governing equations for any given mechanical system I will add two or three more videos of using more advanced systems.